Hello there, Mavericks. How's it going? It is Monday, April 11th. The market was not a kind day today to anyone who is overly bullish. You can see here that Dow down 1.2, SP down 1.7, NASDAQ down over 2%. But take a look at the IWM, the small caps, only down two thirds of a percent. We have been seeing relative outperformance from small caps. They've been holding up much better than everything else. Look, they're still going down, but not as bad. We did have oil close below $95 a barrel today, and you can see gold is slightly higher. This sell-off was really just due to rising interest rate concerns. So anything that has interest rates sensitivity, it got hit the hardest. Tech stocks, high value to speculative companies, those are the things that don't do well in rising interest rate environments. So let's take a look at these markets here. Take a look at the S&P. Over the weekend in our trading room, we talked about how it was a really lousy bounce here. We had our little high, we came down here, and this is where it should have bounced. And we tried to bounce on three separate occasions, and you can see long upper shadows on all of those. We talked about how that's a pretty anemic price action for really what should be a very good buying point. It turned over today, and you can see there's no question that this market is in some trouble here and we're now below the 50 period moving average. The next thing you have to consider is, are we going to see a retest of those March lows? We take a look at the NASDAQ, it's even worse. You can see we're pretty close to it. So I think you really have to take a look and say, hey, these lows, it's very possible. Now, do we get there in a straight line? Maybe. I mean, it's been a straight line down the last five days, even though we had one green candle, still it was just negative price action. I think it's somewhere we get probably some little base here or a bounce or some sort of relief. So as far as do I think we're going from where we are today all the way down to this support, not in a straight line. I think we're likely to get a little bit of a bounce or a base where we just settle out. But ultimately, I think that's where we're going to see and you can see today's heat map, boy, nothing but red. Uh, I think it was 70, let's see, what was it? What was the advanced decline line? Advanced decline line was 70% to the downside. So only a quarter of all stocks went higher. That's just a really negative, negative pattern in the market. So let's kind of wrap all this up and say, what is our market outlook? Over the weekend in our trading room video, we had an outlook of a zero on the week. So we thought that the week was gonna be a very messy week, some up days, some down days. And we had to say where we were on Friday, right back here, it was still mildly bullish. So we had a plus one on the monthly outlook and a zero on the weekly outlook. Now that we have one more candle, and over the weekend I said, Give me two more candles and I'll give you a much better idea of where I think the market is going. We got a really clear one today. So if we take a look at what happened, we've now dropped below the 20 day moving average. We're below the 50, but I wanna see one more day before I get any more bearish. We'll have to see, I mean, we, we close below it, but not all that far. So I think this week, I'm just looking to downgrade to say, hey, from slightly bullish to neutral to slightly bearish. I think that's the only place you can be at this point. We need to see more things happen technically. We need to see the 20 period moving average start to move lower, the 50 day moving average start to move lower. That would be a really good sign that this leg has more to go to the downside. Let's take a look at a couple of potential trades here. Got quite a few on the list. We don't have time to go through all of them. So let's just go through a few. First up, Iron Mountain. We talked about this in the trading room over the weekend and it's staying into tie base. We talked about the 50-55 diagonal call spread as really being a pretty, pretty lame, I shouldn't say lame, a pretty chicken way to get a little bit of bullish exposure. It's not going to be a, uh, a huge winner if it does break out and run, but just a good solid trade here on Iron Mountain. We just need it to not go lower. We just need it to hold in this range or go higher and it's going to be a profitable trade. Next up is Bungie. Now Bungie, it, it's had a run. So this, this is not ready to trade yet, but when I took a look at all the things that were actually moving higher out there, 
This was one of my favorites. It's showing clear relative strength. It is a food company. Uh, they do farm equipment and farm machinery. And so it's in big demand right now. Food production is, we all know that inflation is only going to make everything like this more expensive. So you can see here, this stock is really racking nicely. We got a uh, candle today that tells me, okay, we are probably going to move down for the next day or two. I think anywhere below like 115, like to 112 to 115, I think that is your buying area right in this thing. But remember, we don't just buy it there. It has to bounce there. We have to wait for it to make a reversal candle and then give us a confirmation candle before it can be traded. In the sideways area, this is Danaher. So we had a stock that looked like it was trying to move up and it just did not break out of this 300. Round numbers end up being some really good support and resistance areas. If you take a look at this, we are simply trading between 300 and let's call it 282 on the downside. I think you can take a look at this week's or even next week's uh, 280, 290, 300 butterfly. It's probably going to cost you three, 350. That means you've got 650 in upside if it doesn't move outside of these ranges. On the short side, this is one we talked about over the weekend. This is Twilio. This is in communication services. Um, I know that we had a lot of traders enter this one today. And you can see it actually had a little bit of a green candle today. So we had a gap down. And then there was actually a higher close than the open. We'll wait and see what happens. One candle doesn't make anything. But it's just it tells us, okay, we would have loved to seen a nice red candle with the close on the low. That would have been nice. I know I'm looking at the 140, 145 bear call spread. So looking, hopefully we'll see a trade below that 140 to where our max gain point will be. And next up, Lending Club. We talked about Lending Club as well. Now take a look at this candle. This is the candle you want. This is the candle you want to see. It got down, it had a little bit of buying, but the sellers came right back in and pushed it lower for the day. So down 2%. We've got a target of 10 on this one. It's going to take a while. We talked about having to go all the way out to the May monthly expiration if you're going to use 10 as a target. I know I'm looking at the 11, 15, bear call spread. So a decent trade on this one here on Lending Club. Let's talk about tomorrow. We had a close on our lows today, which almost always means you're going to get a softer open tomorrow. Um, is it going to be a gap down where it just the futures fall overnight? Or is it going to be where we open up and then have some continued selling? Regardless, I think we're looking at some weakness tomorrow. However, if we gap down and it, if we gap down anywhere more than like a half percent, I could ease, uh, easily see us having a little bit of a bounce. Just a little bit of relief bounce off the selling we've seen over the last five days. This is going to be a great shorting opportunity, in my opinion. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. But I think you now need to go back to, okay, the rally that we've seen over the past three, four weeks, it is over. It is over and it's broken. The pattern has broken down just horribly. I think you're now back to looking for more shorting opportunities, more bearish opportunities and bullish opportunities. That's just where we are right now. We do have a CPI tomorrow. And if this thing comes out hot, just expect those interest rates to keep on rising, which is going to be the same story where you see technology, comm services sell off pretty hard. If we get a lower than expected number in CPI, I think it's going to be met with a little bit of, yeah, that's just one number. I don't think a, a lower number really sparks a major market rally here. The Fed has told us we're going to be very hawkish over the next two years. They've, they've told us that. So a little bit lighter than expected CPI isn't going to change that one bit. And we are really right before earnings season. It really starts up later this week with the banks. So just a little couple of little stocks here announcing, but we're next week, we're going to have a much bigger dose of earnings coming in. That is the market roundup. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Goodbye.